Hey everybody, it's Victor. It's time to eat and run here. The Binding of Isaac Victor Repentance Series. Happy Sunday, Mosh Pit. Hope your weekends were awesome and hope your new week is going off to a good start. We did have another video crossing 3,000 likes over the weekend now, putting us at 264 over 270. Which I can't wait. It looks like we may even get a chance to hit TM Trainer Month this week. So definitely click that like button if you're enjoying the, the Isaac content, as well as the Balotro content as well. It's Both of them are doing very well on the channel so far. Is your meme of the day here brought to you by anonymous 01720 title of the thread was super low effort meme but it had to be said i don't know why the text is so blurry but me watching sin complain about 4d chairs stand look 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 i already said he couldn't turn them off standing was not an option because I didn't want to be rude to the people behind us. And also, I'm not going to stand for over two hours to watch a movie. Thank you, Anonymous. So let's hop on in to get rocking and rolling here on the 4D experience. Hopefully not. Well, starting off with the XL4 and bad stats. Well, except our tiers, but ugh. Uh, Stanley six golf because golf sucks kind of i don't know i actually like golf golf is definitely one of those dad sports that like you just you just it like appreciate over time you know like i played golf before and i was pretty i was pretty decent at it i mean it like it wasn't like my calling or anything but i i think i had a a decent golf swing at, for for a time being there it's definitely one of those it's definitely one of those sports that you just kind of you get better at and then you think you're okay <laughs> and then you realize that you're not okay at all uh when you see like what the pros can do it's like oh man like i made i made a par like a legitimate par i am the next greatest golfer of all time and then like you like the logistics of getting like a birdie or an eagle or something like that it's like oh there's no way i'm gonna do that <laughs> let's, let's let's save that for the professionals here that's kind of how golf is for me. Although I will say that one iteration of golf, uh, and uh, this, you know, it, it's it's not super popular, but for those of you who play, you know, you know, I am I am a disc golf bro. I do enjoy disc golf, although I haven't played in many years. Um, disc golfing was a lot of fun. Um, it was good exercise. It got me out of the house, and really, like, it was just it was just fun to play. I need to start disc golfing again. That was that was one of my one of my most favorite times is going out. And playing disc golf with my buddies um i didn't like to travel too much and of course the mosquitoes definitely suck especially during the summertime but right now it would be great disc golf weather i can say that anyway thank you for my ted talk on golf hope you all enjoyed it so we're getting a quarter here which is going to help us out nicely although um yeah i don't i don't know if we're going to be able to get our devil deal here losing it to that skitterer early on definitely hurts and that is the downside of getting an xl floor xl floors let's just get this out of the way right now xl floors are never a net positive even if you have a good floor and you got good stats and you got good items and everything like everything all your dreams come true right xl floors are still a net negative you're always going to be losing something on an xl floor and it, it is completely independent of the of the player's choice that's the biggest crux when it comes to X from the XL floor from a base level. And then after that, you know, if you happen to miss a double deal because you, for example, started on an XL floor that you took red heart damage, that just compounds the, the penalty of you getting an, X L an XL floor, again, totally independent of your of your wants or needs or actions. Um, that's the biggest problem that I have with, with the XL floors. So suffice to say that we need our, we, we not only need to get this devil deal, like really badly it needs to be good um and so do so do both of our boss items how did we manage to do that so do both of our boss items and also our item rooms need to be good now that being said yes yes i will i will admit that starting on an xl floor is not nearly as punishing as getting like a third floor xl floor or something like that it's still bad because you're still losing a whole bunch of stuff but at least if you were going to lose a devil deal, you were still going to lose it anyway because you were on the second floor anyway. Like if you got a bad start. So 
it's not quite as punishing on floor one and floor two unless if you don't get your W. Which right now is definitely what we're facing. Also, I have no idea where this this friggin' seeker room is, dude. So I'm using our gold golden bombs as offense right now just because we kind of have to. Um, we do get uh, the petrified poop, which is great for early game. Hoping that we get another soul heart. That'd be great. Yeah, we're playing Eden today just because I didn't feel like randoming. Um, yeah, that would... Excuse me, that would uh, constitute a bad bad item start. Unless we had PhD, which we don't don't have, obviously. Um, taking Petrified Poop over, over the... Uh, over the Swallowed Penny. But Botfly is also not good. Um, I have no clue where these secret rooms are. I've tried in the most obvious places except for to the right of the shop. And I'm not going back in the curse room. So if it's not here, then I don't care. Feel a fortune. Get an Empress card here. And a reverse strength card, which doesn't really do much. I mean, it, it helps us out with damage for sure. We got 42 cents. I don't want to use all of it to play the uh, fortune telling machine. I will go down to 30 cents though. And whatever whatever soul hearts we can get here is just going to be gravy. Okay. So we got 30 cents. I'm good with that. Let's take the devil card so we can actually have it for the boss. Now the reverse strength card is also pretty good because it, it takes it doubles the amount of damage that the enemies take in the room. I think it can be there, can it? Oh, yeah. That's the one wall that I didn't bomb. Get Botfly as well, which totally threw my brain off for a second there that he shot that shot. Okay. So we're going to start off with a lot of money here. Lots of money. Holy moly. I'm getting ourselves a cardio coin, which I am way too lazy to actually go for because we do not need this much money right now. But... I am going to go ahead and get, do it anyway. But yeah, I didn't really feel like doing a random run. Um, random runs, honestly, random run days don't go so well in terms of views and, and likes and stuff. Like, the Tan Lilith run was was pretty decent last week. Um, but it wasn't like, it's not like a regular Eden run, you know. Um, and uh, that, is, that is one of the most common questions I get asked is, how can you just play Eden all the time when there's, like, so many other characters? Well... I've always said that I think that Eden is still the mark of, of quote, skill in Isaac. You didn't see me do the finger air quotes, but I'm doing the finger air quotes skill in Isaac. Um, just because you have to be, you have to be totally modular. You have to have very good knowledge of everything that you get on an Eden start. And on top of that, like how to, you don't, you get random starting stats. So you have to be really, really flexible. And we didn't get our demo. Deal. Not surprising. But another reason why is just that I just really like playing Eden. I like the randomness of it all. Um, it certainly helps that people pretty much associate coming to see one of my videos with Eden runs. That's pretty much what they're what they're what they're wanting. Um, and uh, you know, I think peppering in a random run day here and there is good, but I don't think doing it every week is, is necessarily what everybody wants. I think there's a level of comfort uh, that everyone gets their their daily dose of Eden. And I'm definitely down for it. Again, I like I like Eden. He's definitely probably my favorite starting character. Um, I'm not including Black Judas because obviously he's not a starting character, but I do like Black Judas as well. So, and that kind of leads us into the question of the episode from last week, uh, which was the technical whips episode, um, in which I thought that that I thought the thumbnail was pretty awesome. It wasn't quite exactly what I was trying to get Alex to do, but it worked. It, it worked. Pretty well. Um, question of the episode came in from Joshua. I'm going to say this is going to be tough. It was Joshua Chak Chakadus Chakadus. I'm going to say Josh. Uh, 4597 who said, question of the episode, what item in your opinion should be a trinket and what item should, what trinket should be an item? So the first part of that is easy. Um, uh, which, which item in your opinion, in your opinion should be a trinket? 
I think that there's a lot of different possibilities out there that would be that would be very good. Um, I think some of the some of the most interesting ones would be stuff that like activates on you taking damage, um, like say for example, bloody lust. I think that one would make a very good trinket. Um, it goes along the the whole Samson angle of of just being, you know, a berserker type thing. It's not really used. To, it, I mean. We're so used to seeing that as a passive, like it's hard for me to imagine it as anything else other than that. But I think that Bloody Lust would make a really good one. I think stuff, I think like the more useless items, like, or maybe not useless, uh, they're kind of useless. Uh, less exciting items would be like Turdy Touch, like E. coli. I think that would make a good, a better trinket than it would a passive item. Um, stuff like that. So I think that, you know, or like, I'll, I'll tell you another thing, and this is going to sound, this is going to sound odd they really don't like the item but i think something like fire mind would be very interesting as a trinket because that opens up a world of possibilities to where you you don't have to be married to the fire mind um cure effect but still get the fire mind bonuses and then you can just drop it whenever you want that's the biggest benefit of trinkets is that they're temporary unless of course you use the smelter or have a gulp pill I do like jar of flies. I mean, brown nuggets okay, but I do like the jar of flies a lot. So yeah, so I would say one of those type of items: E. coli, uh, bloody lust, uh, fire mind. I think those would be very interesting trinkets. Definitely, like would would freshen up the whole trinket world. Now, as far as the other one goes, it's it's that's also a very easy choice for me. Um, uh, the second part of the question was what trinket should be an item as in a passive item? Cancer. Absolutely cancer. That's far and away the the easiest answer because we need more tiers upgrades in the game. Um, I think that having having a having an item that augments your tier delay to the point of being so broken it goes beyond, way beyond the tiers cap would be amazing because we don't have a whole lot of tiers cap breaking items right now, and for it to be a, a pretty common drop or <coughs> in this case pretty common item. Um, <laughs> that's what we would want to see. That's what I would want to see the most. Now, I could say stuff like, you know, Sigil Baphomet. I think that that item is way too good to be a trinket. Um, not, not I'm trying to give, like, the balance team any ideas or anything, of course. But I think that something as powerful as Sigil Baphomet should be a um, should be a trinket. I think it, would be, it just makes for a better trinket, in my opinion. Um, you know, other items, other items that are really, really powerful. I think, honestly, Rock Bottom would be a very interesting trinket. Um, instead of being this ultra powerful, super broken passive item, stuff like that. I, I think that though that kind of outside thinking would really be curious. I think another one that would be a very good trinket instead of an item would be 2020. Um, there's many, there's many different possibilities. Uh, we don't really need keys. Yeah, we, hang on. We don't we don't have to use this right now because I like the reverse chariot card, and we really don't want to get either one of those because I don't want I don't want conjoin. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the reverse chariot card and just drop it out here. I'm gonna use the ace of spades to turn those into keys. I mean. It's nothing big. It's it's something. You you never know, right? You just never know if if we're gonna end up needing those keys. And then I'm gonna skip the curse room because I don't remember how much HP we. Have. Yeah, I love those kind of questions. So thank you very much, Joshua, and everyone who upvoted that one. Remember to submit your own question of the episodes. And you get lots of really great talking points. Um, you know, I think that Isaac, Isaac is so good at creating conversation over seemingly mundane topics. Like, for example, which items should be trinkets? Which should, trinkets should be items? You know, it sounds like a very basic kind of like eh, question. But when you really dive into it, the discussion level that's there is is very very interesting to me. Um. I'm still gonna stick with the reverse chariot card. It's just, it's a boss killer. Devil deal is, or the devil card is not a boss killer. Definitely needs some movement speed. Definitely needs some more damage. Movement speed is an absolute must here. Oh, 
okay. Yeah, movement speed is is no longer a, a need. Or no longer a want, it's a need. Magic fingers is very interesting with this amount of H with this amount of damage. With this amount of uh, money. Sackhead's good. Just need to get something that can help out with our money. Clopia would give us Beelzebub right now. Oh, the treasure map. Come on, game. All right, I'm going to use it. I'm, I'm not going to hold on to Diplopia. We're going to take Magic Fingers. First Lover's card. Interesting. Okay, so the reverse lover's card brings a little, little bit of oomph to this run. Wait, did, did that not count? Am I, am I tripping, or did we not take Beelzebub? There we go. Okay, I just I forgot to touch it. I'm an idiot. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the reverse lover's card. This is going to remove one of our heart containers, but give us a secret room item. By a secret room item, I mean two. And then we're going to do the exact same thing with the other one that's here. But Beelzebub obviously gives us flying and fly immunity, essentially, which is very good. Ooh, spin dizzle. Spin dizzle. Okay. Well, there's Keeper Sack, and we're going to take Keeper Sack. I'm also going to take Orphan Socks for the movement speed. Absolutely take Keeper Sack. And there's Redemption, which we don't really care about. Head of Krampus, don't really care about. Is there anything on the horizon here that we care about? Not really. Spin down is going to reduce the item the item ID by one. Um, I mean, for one half... For one full charge, we can get two my Shadows, which I don't think is worth it, probably. We can also get 10 bombs, which is actually really good for two full charges. I'm very happy to have a movement speed upgrade. Very ha Even more happier to have a flying upgrade here as Beelzebub. The spin dizzle, spin down dice is going to... It's really, really, really going to push the value here. And of course, Keeper Sack automatically just gives us a better run. Even if we don't have anything to synergize with it yet, because we spent all of our money. And there's mini charge. We can go ahead and get that. We can go. Get, we go ahead and get those the double glitter bombs right away. Great shot there by Botfly. And we just found ourselves a new target. Oh man, spin down die, making dreams possible. Magic Mush is going to be ours. Solves everything. Well, not solves everything, but definitely helps out most of the stats we're hurting for, particularly movement speed. Only thing that Magic Mush doesn't give us is a tears upgrade. Just kind of sad face, but okay. I am going to go in the curse room just because there's no reason not to. We're about to get an HP upgrade anyway before the devil deal, so there's, again, no reason not to go in here. Good. Good, good, good. So we get a soul heart. That means that we're not going to lose... Wow, two soul hearts. We're not going to lose the, um, the bone heart, which is really good value. Get host hat and I don't think we have enough to get host hat. That I would be so good. I don't think there's enough charges on this level to get host hat. 
Dead eye is obviously the, the main get there. That may be. We are gonna have magic mush before fighting the boss though, which I'm pretty stoked about. I think we're just gonna have to take Spider Babby. The bursting sack, which is fine. Also, uh shout out to uh Petrified Poop. I haven't been seeing you doing anything, son. I don't think I have been noticing that. We take down Magic Mush with Spin Down Die. It's gonna give us a massive, and I mean massive, all stats up. Except for Tears, again. It's gonna be huge here. Beelzebub charms all the flies, so we don't have to worry about them. Now, we could, if we really wanted to, we could take Empty Heart, which would give us a significant damage upgrade as well. Um, or am I? No, I'm thinking of broken heart or heartbreak. Never mind. Don't listen to me. I'm just gonna take bursting sack. We already have fly immunity. We might as well get spider immunity as well. It cuts out a majority of the early game uh, enemies as threats. Peep's Eye, that would be another good trinket instead of a passive item. Regular old HP upgrade, which is really not going to matter because we have all these empty hearts. We really should try to find the super secret room so we can maybe get a confessional booth, but I think we can, we can go along with what we got right now. And Dizzle. Funny thing about all this is that we still don't have a Devil Deal precedent. <laughs> kind of looked like the secret room. Not too worried about getting into the mob trap room here. And you're seeing how much better we're moving around here thanks to those mobility upgrades that we got. Magic Mush and from Orphan Socks. Gonna need money for any full charges that exist. Also, of course, we have Sackhead, which is going to give us an opportunity to get some extra stuff. Don't forget about those black poops in this room. Make it easy on yourself. No reason to work hard here. Get an ultra secret room. Okay. Lost old buddy. Check him out now. <laughs> uh, no, the magic mush effect does not does not stack. Um, it would give us just another all stats up, though, which I am going to take anyway. Um, but the damage upgrade does not stack with itself. You do get damage, of course, but I'm basically just taking it for the HP upgrades and uh, the movement speed. Now, if I really, really, really wanted to play right, I would have gone into the mob trap room first. Not mob trap room, sorry. The sacrifice room first. And gone down to basically no HP and then healed myself back up with magic mush. Should I have done that? Eh, probably. But we didn't. That's okay. That's okay. So let's, man, this is a weird, weird freaking map. Predictably, we get a greed fight right after getting Keeper Sack. Rocking a good amount of money right now. So I got worried about the bomb fly hitting us, and that's the reason why I uh, adjusted that way. 
though I know instinctively that they can't hit me because we have uh, they're charmed and we got we got them on Beelzebub. But still, instinctively, instinctively, I also always dodge out of bomb flyways just because that's what you that's just what you do. Another HP upgrade here. Really, I'm hoping that we find a uh, confessional booth soon. We can get rid of these god dang broken hearts. I don't know what to do with any of these broken heart accessories. All I know is that it make a great jingle. Thank you, Hank. Super Secret Room might be here. I'd be surprised. Is there? Wow. Now. Eternal Heart. No confessional, unfortunately. There goes our Eternal Heart. All right. Not that we really needed it anyway, but it's still like one of the worst, like, starting configurations in this in this fight is to have reap creep but then have the two inner eye wall bangers on the right side but here for reap creep you just got to listen to the cue the the sound cues of which brimstone he's going to do yeah and i think we just uh, i'd love piercing shots but let's just get straight up damage let's not overthink it um, we could one, two, we lose the bone heart three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We go down to eight, eight taps on sacrifice room, but we have spin down, which kind of, it's kind of driving me to think that this is a, might be worth it. Let's see if we get red hearts here. That's going to determine it. Don't. So now we either have to get red hearts in the boss trap, mob trap room, or just get red hearts here. See if we can get one. We did. Okay, so it's good. It gives us, it gets us to nine taps on the sack room. Even if we take damage on one of these, on this red heart that we have in the bone heart, it's not going to affect our tapping skills by any means, shape, or form. Okay. Let's go see if we can find another red heart. Almost thought there was going to be the secret, super secret room up there. But then I remembered we already had gone to it, so... Okay, so the goal, the goal here basically is for us to get some items that we can spin down and also get into the devil deal. Or angel deal. And we get brimstone. Yeah. Boy's going to take it every single time. Now, the only problem with this is, is that obviously we... Uh, Redemption is quite useless. There's no way that we're going to be able to get Candy Heart. There's no full charges. But... Magic Mush Brimstone. Brimstone's been showing up a lot lately, and I'm here for it. Take Lost Soul Buddy, check him out now, and then we will head on down, and hopefully he gives us at least soul hearts, and he doesn't give us just like a bunch of trinkets. He 
did neither of those. Giving us a surprising double eternal heart. Had a chance to shine, Lost Soul, but he could have even dropped us an Angel Dio item that we could have spun down, but... I mean, thanks for the HP, I guess. Gotta be careful in this room. It likes to throw down uh, just random Mimic chests on you. get a reverse fool car. What the heck? There's a planetarium in here. Planetarium could be interesting. Jupiter. Now we could turn that into Terra. Which I do like better than Jupiter, even though Jupiter does give us more HP. I want Terra. Now, the reason why we want a reverse fool card is because that would allow us to drop our items, our, or our, I should say our bombs and money and keys as items, which we could then put in the secret room, which has a reroll machine in it. Oh no, lost soul, buddy. Oh no. Can go in the curse room right now. I prefer to wait. <laughs> Just get a third magic much, I guess. Uh, sure. But we'll we'll just get a third magic mush. Look at us. That will also give us the fun guy transformation. Yep. As predictable as the day is long. As soon as we get keeper sack, the game is like, nope, you don't get a single store. And the best part is that we can't even go into the, into the hush shop because there's no way in hell that we're going to be able to get to that before 30 minutes. So, congrats, game. I hope you're happy. I know, I know. We were trying to go for, for Terra. I'm hoping that we still get Terra, but I think that three magic mushes are just funnier. Sometimes Isaac is about making your own fun, you know? So we have the fun guy transformation, which gives us the stompy effect. Couldn't tell by the smoke. Nine Liz Ives, which does turn into the pact. But you know I'm gonna take nine. That can turn into that can turn into stigmata. Uh, which I wouldn't mind, but the thing is that I really want Terra, so I'm just not I'm not gonna worry about Stigmata. Fortunately, I don't think we're gonna be able to get Terra. If it cost me being silly, that's gonna cost us Terra, which is fine. It's fine. We'll do it for the memes. Fortunately, and double unfortunately, that we have no challenge room here. And yeah, I'm not taking more. People ask me like some of the worst, some of the worst items in the game. Mars is definitely up there. Get a devil deal and I have Belial and Paris toy would be so good, but we just don't have we have no need for either one of these. It would be nice to get Revelation too, but oh well. We get a damage upgrade here thanks to redemption.
Okay. I saw so solemnly swear to do my best to keep Lost Soul Buddy safe. All you all you Lost Soul Buddy stands can can calm down. I'm going to try to keep him safe my, as best as I can. As best as the game allows me. You might be here, but I'd be shocked. Definitely no brim snapping, but we still have good damage here with brimstone. Definitely the biggest downside to, and pun intended, the biggest downside to getting three magic mushes is the fact that we can't see ourselves very well. Well, I take that back. We can see ourselves very well. We can't see what's coming our way very well. Trying to look for item room here, or items. No, no, that's all, buddy. Oh, no. Empress card. Don't really need it. Whoa, there. I don't know what shot moved that bomb. It definitely looked like Botfly shot our bomb, though. Now, with the Stombie effect, we do have to be careful in the womb because of those blood clots, but hopefully that's not going to be an issue. And we've gone in the wrong way. All right. Speaking of blood clots right there. All right. Here we go. It's also not being made very easy deal with the fact that we're like Isaac is like five times the size of his normal sprite right now. Might as well play the judgment because we're not going to use this money for anything else. Hopefully we get an HP upgrade here. HP. Judgment. I know you're not looking behind you. Picture the most horrifying face that you've ever seen. That's what's coming your way. Uh, speedball. I mean, we could get spun, but like, I'd honestly rather get scapular. Because scapular will allow us to play sa any sacrifice rooms that we come across infinitely. Okay, good. There's the northeast side and northwest side of the map. First the maze is first maze is wilding out over here. I will take the bloody crown. Okay, so let's go see if we can get anything with spin down the boss room before we go get scapular. There is a 0% chance that we have to get rock bottom. The only, only option would be for us to get somehow get a full charge with sack head. have seen the item move here that's just because of curse of the maze wait and we get a damage upgrade here and I'm gonna take the tears up from uh, from the bar of soap I'm gonna hold on to the to the wicked crown or bloody crown just so we can have uh, we have an extra item room on the next floor
have a curse the maze we have infinite keys essentially so i don't mind using our keys here for this eternal chest hopefully get something i think we have any evil item do we not okay now we don't need to hold on to the bloody crown anymore because we've already traversed through the level so the level has already spawned an item room for us oh uh, that's all buddy oh no air walk it's hp although we could we could get another damage upgrade And also contribute to spun. Yeah, I like that play. We have nine lives, so I'm not worried about us dying. I'm flying going to do your job, or you're just going to fly around? Okay. Apple of Sodom. I mean, I guess. Well, no, no. We actually don't want to take that in case we find a sacrifice room and an HP upgrade. Air walk, I don't care about. Okay, yeah, there's possible almost full charge there for spin down. All right. We could go in the curse room. It's going to kill us on our way out. So, to say that would be less than ideal would be an understatement. We don't want that. I'm stoned. Thank you. Finally found our item room here. Kind of mad that it wasted all of the the entire level in order for us to find the item room. And then we can get sausage, which is a very good all stats up, including HP. So we definitely want to go back and get the mini charges for that. I'm shocked that the secret room is not there. That's really surprising. That would be the most obvious wall for us to have in terms of the secret room location. The next obvious one would be here, but we know it's not there. Okay, so we got to get a full charge here on Spin Dizzle. Hoping there's a, a confessional booth in here. Not. And there's no, there's absolutely nothing that we could re-roll for in the devil deal that would make me want, that would, that would, that would make me want more than sausage. So we're just here to get the full charge essentially. Yeah, when you're the size of the boss, it makes it very difficult to dodge. See like what's coming your way and also like accurately dodge. We didn't get double deal anyway. Put red heart damage. And yes, I don't know how we didn't get rung up there for the brimstone literally going through Isaac's head. It just shows you how wonky the hitboxes are in this game. I mean, if you played Isaac, you all you you know you you just know. 
sometimes there's those shots you're like, how did that hit me? And then there's other times like, wow, we should have been hit by that. That was one of those, wow, we should have been hit by that sort of thing. Loki. Loki and Loki. Every time I see Loki, I'm reminded that I've just never watched any of the Marvel movies past the first Iron Man. I guess technically, like if you include the, the first X-Men movie, the one with the, uh, the one with, um, oh, I can't, his name now. Oh, Ian McKellen as a, uh, as Magneto, Patrick Stewart. Like the very, I'm talking about the very, very first one. I guess I've seen that Marvel movie, but I've not seen any of the MCU stuff or anything still. At this point, I don't know if I'm going to. At least it went straight to Isaac. Now I will say that us being an Isaac here, on 2 HP is not necessarily ideal. We definitely don't want to die. But with us being so large, it makes it very difficult for us to see where the crack the skizzle, crack the skizzle shots are. I have no idea where those shots came from. Also, we have to avoid Isaac teleporting directly on top of us like he did the other day. That was definitely something. Now goes Isaac. Let's see what the chest has in store for us here. Very long, surprisingly long run, considering that we have a lot of really good items. It just took us a while to get there, you know? Uh, yeah. I mean, I'll take rubber cement, I guess. But this is some wow bad. This is some wow bad items right here. I mean, rubber cement's not wow bad, but everything else that we saw was for sure. I mean, we're bigger than we're bigger than most of the bosses that we're seeing right now in size. It feels like we got even bigger. I don't know how it's possible. I didn't see everyone's uh, suggestions about the the baby mosh pit. Are we are we just gonna get nothing but lusty rooms here for the rest of this run? Uh. People are saying the Sinfants, and I thought the Sinfants was pretty clever. The Sinfants. I think that that sounds pretty cool, although having the having the word sin is a little bit weird with infants being also like predicated or uh, not predicated, but um, presumed. I did like that though. Uh, the ball pit was another one that I saw that was pretty clever. Let's see, we got Backstabber on way far away. Lost Soul Buddy. We could actually try to get a forget me now. Unless we find Blue Baby, then I'm just gonna go fight him. Dude, this is getting ridiculous. We've had Lust, I think, in every every room but like one the chest here. Not that it's that big of a deal, of course. It's just it's odd that we keep seeing the mini bosses. I love seeing all those, all those baby pictures are definitely very wholesome. So don't rely on bot fly at all. Sci fly you can kind of, kind of rely upon, but bot fly, he's, he's, he, he's either all or nothing in terms of point defense. Trying to spread the spread the wave of brimstone here with uh, rubber cement. 
Hey guys. And also the wrong way, all right. Okay. All right. Go check out our last couple items here. This run, this run just feels like it took forever. I don't know why. I mean, we did do a lot of like back and forth with re-rolling re and everything. I'm gonna take bucket of large just for the two HP, and then uh, yeah, we can take little dumpy. Little dumpy. Now that would be a, another great item for a good trinket. A little dumpy. Uh, we'll take huge growth. This is not huge growth. Just make it ultra ridiculous here. Now, huge growth does not synergize with the uh, tarot cloth, unfortunately. We're still going to be pretty massive, though. Ridiculous proportions. It's going to be giant Isaac. There we go. We are going to get the dub here, mostly thanks in part to Spin Dizzle. You got to love it. Oh my God, we're massive. <laughs> I mean, this is without any uh, one that makes you larger pills either. That's pretty impressive. I got to say, I don't think I've ever gotten three magic mushes in one run, especially on like a first lap, like non victory lap run. So pretty impressive. Very quirky run here to start the new week. Thank you for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you click the like button. It's the best way to support my channel. It's totally free of charge. It only takes less than a second to do. And I would appreciate it. It gets us one step closer to TM Trainer Month. I hope you have a great start to your brand new week. As always, I'll see you all next time. Until then, so long, everybody. Thanks for watching this video. I'd like to thank some patrons of mine like CTOP18, Steve with a Lisp, and Pokey Stick. If you'd like to have your name read at the end of an Isaac episode, check out my Patreon campaign, which you can find at patreon.com slash Invicta.